I've shown you what you need in order to calibrate your microscope objectives and how to position the eyepiece graticule. But what do you actually see and why do you need to calibrate anyway? Look at this diagram of what you would see if you looked at the slide micrometer using the four times objective. This represents what is etched onto the slide micrometer and it looks like some sort of gun sight with an object in the very centre. The black ring has four points crossing it at the 12, 3, 6 and 9 o'clock positions and these points are guides to help you find the centre of the ring and what it contains. If you've listened to the explanation of centering the subject of interest on your slide, I recommend you do what it suggests before moving to the 10 times objective. Even with centering, you may get lost as to where you are on the micrometer slide, so remember what I said about finding a starting point for focus when setting up for color illumination. Wind the stage up to the stop point, then move it so you place the centre of the slide over the hole where the light is coming up through the stage. Select your 10 times objective and then look down the eyepieces, not before. For the 10 times objective, the distance between the surface of the slide and the tip of the objective lens is less than 5mm as seen here. The two surfaces will almost be touching when using the 40 times objective, and that tiny distance between them will be just a film of oil when using the 100 times objective. Try to remember this when, after placing a slide on the stage, you want to begin to find where to focus. This image should give you a starting point. In this case, looking at the slide micrometer, you should hopefully see at least part of the black ring, as here. And because of the curve orientation, this must be the 3 o'clock guide, so the centre of the ring is off to the left so move the stage appropriately to find it. You may find yourself looking at the top and the curve of the black ring will be like this with the 12 o'clock guide, therefore the centre of the ring will be down below. Once you've found it, the centre of the ring actually contains a scale seen coming into view here. Using the 10 times objective, which remember translate to 100 times magnification, you can see that this is an accurate 1mm scale etched into the glass of the slide and is identified by the 1mm label bottom right. You can see that this 1mm scale is divided into 10 blocks, 0 to 10, 10 to 20 and so on, up to 100 on the far right. Notice also that each block is further subdivided into 10 subunits, with a marker point at the fifth subunit. So what you're actually seeing is 1mm divided into 100 subunits, seen here. As 1mm is 1000 micrometers, each subunit is therefore 10 micrometers in length. The term micrometer is correct, but it can also be referred to in a short form known as the micron. The Greek letter for micron is mu. So the correct written term for the micrometer is mu with a small m after it. If the eyepiece graticule is positioned correctly, and you have successfully set up the slide micrometer, then if you look down the eyepieces you should see both scales. Here I've moved the stage so that the slide scale appears above the eyepiece scale, which by default will always be in the centre of your view. The eyepiece scale is identified by the lack of a 1mm label in the bottom right end. Get used to how you set this view up, and when ready, calibrating the 10 times objective can begin. Notice that I position the two zero points of the scale so that they lie parallel to each other. This greatly simplifies the next step, which, for the calibration, is to make an estimation, as accurately as possible by eye, of the point where the two scales overlap at the 100 point on the far right, as seen here. This is the whole point of the calibration exercise. When using the 10 times objective, the two scales appear at first glance to be the same. Therefore, you could use the IP scale without calibration, assuming it represented 1mm and make measurements accordingly. But as you can see from the position of the overlapping scales, it is not an accurate 1mm. In this case, it's 98.8% of a millimetre. Sometimes in scientific research, this may not be good enough. Therefore, a correction factor must be applied to any subsequent calculation involving the number of eyepiece units you've estimated a subject is represented by, if you want an accurate measurement of your subject, and this has to be done for each objective. The formula is simple. It's the number of slide units divided by the number of eyepiece units. So in this case, that's 98.9 divided by 100, which is 0.989. Ah, but remember, each slide unit is 10 microns in length, so you must multiply this value by 10. So putting these numbers into the formula, we get a true value for each eyepiece unit using this 10 times objective, which is 9.89 microns, not 10 microns. 
you may well find that one microscope has a 10 times objective that gives a value for an eyepiece unit as low as 9.5, while another gives 10.5. The point is, each objective is different, so you cannot assume that if you have done this exercise once, you can apply the factor you derive to all similar power objectives. Let's increase magnification. Remember what I've said about centering your subject, so place the slide scale in the centre of your field of view and switch to the 40 times objective. Now the focusing point will not be far off from where it was for the 10 times, so use the fine focus ring to make the scale sharp and try and get an image with the IP scale in view that looks similar to this. At the higher magnification you now see less of the slide scale, but the IP scale size and position remains constant, so you know that the larger dimension scale you're looking at is that of the slide even though you can't see its 1mm label. As before, I positioned the zero point of the IP scale at a convenient point on the slide scale, which just happens to be the 4060 section. Although you can actually see these numbers, they are irrelevant here. It is the actual number of units you can see that is important, and in this view, I can see a total of 27 units clearly from side to side. You can see that by the red line I've drawn on this image. But this is important. You can see that the 100 point of the IP scale crosses the slide scale at around 21 slide units. There are 21 slide units within the whole of the IP scale. You don't say it crosses at 61 units. Don't get confused and use 61 as your value. It is the 21 visible units within the IP scale that is the value you need. That's the best estimation I can make by eye, but note that with the higher magnification the perceived thickness of the slide scale unit markers can come into play. Because in this example the IP scale's 100 point actually sits on the marker on the slide scale, I've made it a whole number, 21. But if you wish to make a more precise measurement, you could call it 20.9 units. That's your decision. But whatever degree of refinement you apply, be consistent. This will become even more important when using the 100 times objective later. So if the formula is applied again, we obtain a value for each eyepiece unit for this particular 40 times objective of 2.1 microns. Now you can check this pair of values by thinking about the changing magnification factors involved. By going from the 10 times to the 40 times objective, although you are magnifying the image by a factor of 4, you are essentially decreasing the field of view by the same factor of 4. So if with a 10 times objective each eyepiece unit was approximately 10 microns, then accordingly, each unit using this 40 times objective will represent 10 divided by 4, or 2.5, and our value of 2.1 micron supports that. Let's see if it applies to an even greater magnification. So once again, centre the slide scale in your field of view and switch to the 100 times objective. And whether you use oil for the calibration is a matter of choice, but remember what I said about the perceived thickness of the marker lines on the magnified slide scale. If you want to be as accurate as possible, I would get the clearest image you can by using oil immersion. After setting this up and refocusing, and with the slide scale again positioned so that the zero point on the IP scale is aligned at an appropriate marker on the slide scale, you should see something like this. Now there are less than 10 slide scale units clearly visible. And here I'm going to say that the 100 point on the IP scale crosses the slide scale at the 8.8 .8 slide unit mark. So the formula is again applied using this number, and then the value for each eyepiece unit when using this 100 times objective is 0.88 microns. If you again think about magnification and subsequent decreasing field of view, by going from the 40 times to the 100 times objectives, although you are increasing the magnification by 2.5, the field of view is reduced by the same factor. So logically, if an eyepiece unit was 2.5 microns at 40 times, it will only be worth 1 micron at 100 times. The value here of 0.88 is close enough to prove the point in that it's almost 1 micron, but also to show the degree of inaccuracy that can be induced by a particular objective. It is in fact only 88% of 1 micron. What does this mean in terms of actual measurement? I'd go through the film again and make sure you understand each step and why it's necessary. Then we'll have a look at a simple example. Here's an image of some moist starch grains seen under a 40 times objective with the IP scale in view. I'm interested in measuring the width of the big grain in the top left corner, and I've marked it so you can see my estimation of the number of IP units that cover it. And my estimation is 18.3 IP units.
If you apply the value we derived previously of 2.1 microns per eyepiece unit for this objective, then this starch grain actually measures 38.43 microns in width. And that's all there is to it.